Alright guys, it's Mad Friday and welcome back. Right, today we're going to be looking at the two tier 10 Russian heavy tanks. Having a quick look through both of them, both the IS-4 and the IS-7. We're going to have a look at the differences, the different sort of guns they have, and try and sort of figure out which one you should try and grind for first, uh, if you don't have them already. And if you do have them already, probably no need to watch this video. Anyway, right, so we'll start with the IS-4. And we'll go look at the packages first as well, actually. No, not there. Here. Right, so let's whiz up to the top. So you've got IS-7 and IS-4 right next to each other. IS-7 leads from the IS. Where are you? There. A tier 7. Brilliant little tier 7 tank. Gun's a bit derpy. Doesn't have a huge amount of pen. But the armour does work pretty well. Then it leads on to the IS-3. Probably one of the greatest tier 8 tanks in the game. Pike nose. Decent gun. Fairly mobile. Yeah, just a good all round tank. IS-8. A lot of people will love this tank, I despise it. Its armour does not work as a heavy tank. It's more of a, far, a slow medium or a heavy heavy medium, that sort of thing. And I just didn't get on with this one. But it does lead to one of the best tanks in the game, the IS-7. Right, so you can see the IS-4 below, so where does this one come from? Well, this one starts with the KV-3. And to be honest, I think it should also come from the IS. And I'll show you why in a minute. KV-3 is a pretty good tank, although I just feel the IS, the armour profile, is just works a little better. So I preferred the IS. Anyway, KV-4. An extremely strong tank for tier 8, probably the strongest at tier 8. Although it's not very mobile, and the top gun is 107mm this. It's good pen, but it doesn't hit hard enough, and the reload's too long, and the DPM's just not good enough. And you will get flanked quite easily. So yeah, I did enjoy playing it, but the IS-3 was more fun. Now, on to the tier 9. This is where I kind of changed my mind about the lines. I disliked the IS-8, but the ST-1 was a legend. Absolutely awesome. The top turret on the gun on this thing. One of the best hold-down tanks in the game, let alone at tier 9. Yep, ST-1, awesome tank. And that leads on to the IS-4. Right, so what was I saying about the IS probably being a better follow-on to the IS-4 than the IS-7? Well, let me put it back in the filter. Let's add tier 7 as well. Right, have a look at this. Look at that side profile. And then look at the IS-4's side profile. Aren't they similar? Wouldn't have that been a much better progression to go on to the IS-4? Yeah, the KV-3 looks nothing like the IS-4. And to be honest, the hull profile on the IS-4 is also very similar to the IS as well at the front. The IS is just a baby IS-4, really. Yep. Yeah, well, I can't, I can't change what's in the tech trees, but you see what I mean. What you may want to do is go... Let's go back onto the tech tree. Grind up to here. Try out the IS if you'd like it. Uh, you can either carry or go into the IS-7, or you can change your mind and go for the IS-4. But, you don't want to miss out on the IS-3, and the IS-8 was just one of those things that I had to grind through to get to the IS-7. So it's completely up to you uh, which line you choose, but we'll talk about the two tier 10s, and that'll probably help to make your mind up. But the highlight of that line is definitely the ST-1 at tier 9. Brilliant tank. Highlight of this line at tier 8 is the IS-3, and the highlight of tier 7 is the IS, so it's kind of a bit of a mix and match. It'd be nice if you could swap and change between the two lines as you go up, but never mind. Right, so first off we'll look at the IS-7. This tank is blatantly designed to fight people from the front. It has one of the strongest turrets you will find in the game. There is, uh, well there is hatches, but they are so small, so small profile. Only tanks are a lot taller than you can actually fire down into them. Yep, and the front plate is a pike nose, a very very thick pike nose and it's very very well angled and the lower plate is actually really thick as well so only the highest of penetration guns can get through there anyway unless they're, they're a lot further away from you. If people are fighting you face to face they can't aim down. When they aim down they actually increase the angle on the front plate but if they get further away it actually makes the angle better for them to pen. So this tank is best played in close quarters, really. 
although if you can get the hole down at long range the front plate will work very well and also the turret is just absolutely beast like this tank is equipped with a 130mm cannon unlike the IS-4 let's go and have a look at the stats right so 130mm S70 fires only 4.38 rounds per minute but because it's 130mm the alpha is quite high at 490 so the DPM is quite a bit over 2000 so it's not too bad the DPM is not like crazy good uh, but it's exposure time as well if you think about it 4.38 rounds per minute you only have to expose yourself four times a minute to get the shots away rather than say a medium tank with like eight rounds a minute they have to expose themselves eight times a minute which means they can get shot eight times in a minute yeah so it's all about working that penetration is okay at 250 with its standard AP rounds and this has APCR as its premium 303 not the highest of premium pen for a tier 10 tank and alpha is still the same HE pen is actually okay at 68 and 640 alpha which makes very handy for fighting Waffentragers. You only have to hit him um, three times with HE. And he's brown bread. Yeah, so onto the worst two stats about this gun. Aim time and accuracy. 3.4 second accuracy. That is shocking. It's like KV2 levels of aim time. Anyway, in 0.4 accuracy, some of the worst accuracy you will find on a tier 10 tank. But um, you've got the armour to get in people's faces and just derp them from close range so some of those stats really uh, are not really valid in most situations unless you're trying to snipe with this thing and then you're probably playing it wrong anyway see here engine power 100 and, oh, sorry 150 1050 horsepower that is huge this tanks not particularly heavy and it does shift around very quickly Track traverse 28 degrees a second, that's pretty good. And view range is 400 meters, so you don't really need any optics if you've got a fairly skilled crew. Yeah, right, so let's go and look at the uh, other stats about this tank. There we go, it has 2,150 hit points, that is 350 less than the IS-4. So it doesn't have particularly good hit points, but the armor profile does mean that you won't be losing too many hit points too quickly. Speed limit is very, very good at 60 kilometers an hour, but you won't reach out on flat ground. Pardon me. Uh, it will do 40, 50 kilometers an hour on flat ground, and it will hit the 60 going downhill. So 1,050 horsepower engine, very, very good. Chassis rotation 28 degrees a second. That's not actually that bad for a heavy tank. And turret rotation is only 25 degrees a second, but it does feel enough. And the rest of that stuff we've already talked about. You can see the armor profile there, some very big numbers, and it's quite a well rounded tank. But we're going to go and look at both tanks in tanks.gg in a bit. Right, so onto the IS 4 then. This is more of a traditional looking heavy tank. Uh, it's designed to have angles all of the way around. And I found this is one of the best tanks in the game for bouncing shots off your ass. Yes, yeah, really, really troll, and I love it. Turret is, looks like the stock SD1 turret, but I think it's a little thicker, maybe, I don't know. And it has a 122mm cannon rather than 130 and the gun handling is actually better than the IS-7. Although you wouldn't think that playing it, it's quite a derpy gun. Yeah, um, even though the accuracy is 0 0.03 better than the IS-7, you don't really notice it. The rounds seem to go wherever they like. Anyway, this hull. It looks exactly the same as the SD1's hull, although it's up armoured. And also the driver's viewport at the front, the actual viewport has been taken away and it's now just a solid block. But it does still leave quite some square angles for people to smash heat shells through. And the top of the turret can be overmatched by huge shells. But they've added that little plate on from the SD1. And I think that does um, kind of stop people getting the shells in onto the top of your turret without them being higher than you. Anyway, yeah, quite a well-rounded hull, although it doesn't have that insane pike nose like the IS-7. But it's very, very thick at the front, and uh, you need an extremely high pen gun to go through. But if you angle this thing like that, you do expose the angled piece of the hull there, and the same the other side. But this is one of the strongest side armors in the game. It's not far off mouse level, so you can side scrape this thing, you've just got to be very careful about how much you angle because if you angle too much that that piece on the front there becomes quite square and it becomes quite an easy pen so yeah can side scrape this thing very effectively but you just need to be a little bit careful about your angle 
probably not even more than that is enough and you should bounce pretty much everything there right so we're going to the gun stats this is one of those tanks where when you get the sit in it's not fully upgraded but I think you have this gun from the IS-8 maybe if you've been up that line already anyway right so engine power is a bit lower at 750 but the gun 122 mm M62 T2 fires five rounds a minute which is more than the IS-7 yet but the alpha damage is lower at 440 so the DPM is pretty much similar anyway you do get um, 258 pen with your standard AP rounds but this tank for its premium rounds fires heat and you get a lot more pen at 340 and 440 alpha damage and again same HE pen as the IS-7 but the alpha is low obviously because it's a smaller calibre gun but it's still very handy for fighting stuff, soft skin vehicles aim time is a lot better at 2.9 it's still not good but it's better than the IS-7 and accuracy is also better at 0.37 so that's 0.03 better but again in reality they're both pretty derpy and you don't really notice the difference Track tra traverse is 2 degrees less at 26 but it's only 2 degrees and you have the nice 400 meter view range on this tank as well right so there we go not a huge amount to talk about between the differences mainly about the, uh, the armor profiles and slightly higher profile tank in general this thing but it does bounce really really well and it has a log all Russian tanks need a log just because right anyway off into tanks.gg now just to have a look around the two armor profiles well, here we go, fellas. We're looking at the IS-7 using tanks.gg. So it's what well, this is one of the best tanks frontally in the game. It has this ridiculous pike nose, and you can see it's 150 millimeters of plate thickness. But because of the pike nose, the majority of this front plate is around 300 millimeters or over. There's a couple of patches of 280, 290 down here from the front, but then that's still 290 and it just gets better the further you go up yeah and a lower plate as well 150 millimeters thick not quite so well angled so you have to be careful about this that's why you really need to play this tank quite close to people because the closer they get it actually increases this angle downlet and it becomes a harder pen and the further away they get it squares up this front plate even more and most tier tens will be able to get through that so ideally hide this if you can and also the front plate if you're face hugging someone be careful about who you do face hug because some tier 10 mediums like the FV4202 with their 10 degrees of gun depression can aim down on your front plate and there's areas where they can penetrate if they aim down although it's going to be very hard they can do it so you need to be a little bit careful about that anyway right so on to the best bit about this tank it's ridiculous turret let's try and get it up as square as I can right why are you doing that 270 millimeters on this part here out to 240 there and 210 there but the shaping of the turret is insane and it brings up some huge numbers and the gun man is especially troll as well uh, so there's only going to be some tier 10 tank destroyers maybe that can pen through here if they're very lucky but the aim's going to have to be really really good but the majority of this tank is just ridiculous from the front so what about the side? well the side of the turret is pretty good as well you can see these numbers they reduce towards the back but still that is some insane numbers for the side of the turret side of the hole then 150mm again, but it's very well angled. It's kind of angled downwards and upwards like that. Can you see? There's two angles. You've got that angle and that angle. So if you hit above that line, you're still hitting 150mm with a half decent angle. And below that, you're hitting 100mm on a very steep angle, but it doesn't bring up that big of numbers. Right, so why do you have to be careful shooting at the side of one of these? Well, the side of the turret is pretty strong. This bit's not particularly strong, but this block of spaced armor here, this is what trolls the hell out of people. 
That turns an average side armor into an insanely strong side armor, but it's not that big. So if you're on a lower tier tank and you need to pen this, you need to be aiming through here really. Just above the tracks and you'll get a pen. But if you catch this tank on an angle, you're never going to penetrate any of it. You need to aim for the pike nose if the guy does angle. You do see people try and angle at an IF-7 because they don't realise that it's strongest from the front. Anyway, let's have a look at the back. Very well angled look, but there is some uh, still 100 millimeters, but it's not angled at all there. So that's an easy pen there. And this part is 70 millimeters, and it's angled, but still only brings up 100 millimeters effective. And each side bit is a pretty troll as well. These will troll the hell out of people if they're aiming at your bottom from a range and they miss this part. It's just going to bounce straight off. Artillery does have quite a large place to aim for, but yeah that's artillery right so the hatches I was talking about on this tank they're only 30 millimeters but they are very well hidden behind the front of the turret so from the front you're not going to get hit there but if you do try and face hug an E100 or something like that just be very careful because an E100 does have fairly good gun depression and if they can catch that with 30 millimeters of armor if you catch someone who's a really really skilled player and you face hug them they may even smash you through there or even there with high explosive and they're going to do full damage so be very very careful anyway so that's the IS-7 let's now skip to the IS-4 right fellas onto the IS-4 and now we're going to see probably the main difference between the two tanks the IS-7 is designed to fight people from the front it has that pike nose and it is completely does, you know just totally designed to fight people in a very linear style from the front and bounce the hell out of people whereas the IS-4 a lot of its weaknesses are actually at the front to start with the front plate it's 140 millimeters the angle is okay but the numbers aren't particularly big so tier 10s which you're going to be fighting because you're a tier 10 they're going to be able to go through that this driver's hatch on the ST1 was a bit of a weak point. There was a driver's hatch here which has been taken away and it's quite a solid block now. So the front of here can be penetrated by tier 10s. Um, but the lower plate is actually thicker. 180mm is quite a steep angle and it still brings out some decent numbers. So really you're looking at 220, 230 effective if you face people head on. Side parts of the hull, huge numbers but doesn't make up for the fact that some tier 10s are going to be able to penetrate you even if you angle a little bit it doesn't make it good enough to bounce a tier 10 medium for example so we're going to have to do something different with this tank right onto the turret and the main weak point from the front here's that patch I was on about 30 millimeters, and it doesn't look like that flappy up piece that you see in the garage is actually counted in the collision model Right, so 30mm meaning any 90mm cannon or above can whiff that and they're going to penetrate from anywhere. It does get a little better on the sides, 75mm at a very, very huge angle, brings up huge numbers, as does the rest of the turret. Absolutely ridiculously strong this turret and the gun mantlet is insane. There's only one little patch here, round here, that tier 10 TD might be able to get through but it's quite a small area so you don't need to be too worried about that yeah so from the front it's a bit of a mixed bag this whole area here is a bit of a easy pen for tier turns as long as they don't roll really low with their pen roll and the top of the turret can be overmatched right so let's set this thing up at sort of 20 30 degrees and uh, see what the side scrapings are like I'll set it up like that so you start off at the front, the worst is 300 millimeters, and it just gets better the whole way along to huge numbers. And of course, with the track spacing as well, from the front, it starts at 472, 471, and gets bigger. Absolutely ridiculous tank for side scraping, and I really love it. <coughs> Pardon me. Anyway, right, so let's have a look at the actual side armor itself. So the side of the turret kind of on par with the IS-7 turret although it's less there's less angling meaning people firing heat at you 
going to have a bit of an easier time getting through this. The side of the hull is 160 millimeters. I think that's 20 millimeters more than the ST1 hull that this was based on. Uh, so it does bring up some good numbers, but if people hit you square at the back here, it's going to go through. And there's spaces through the tracks on this model, I meaning it's still 160 millimeters of side armor, but there's no angling, so the effective armor is 160. So that's going to be a easy pen for all tanks you can meet. Right, so at the back of this tank, and you pull off some really weird bounces with this thing. It's 100 millimeters and 120 millimeters there. That is one of the strongest asses you will see. Bar like the mouse or something stupid like that. Anyway, so when you, if you're fighting someone over there, and people sneak up behind you and they try and hit this, although that you can pull off some really weird bounces. And troll, troll the hell out of people with this, it's quite funny. Anyway, right, so there we go, fellas. IS-7 designed to fight people from the front. IS-4 a slightly more well-rounded tank. It's a little weaker from the front, but if you set this thing up to side scrape, it is just insane. Right, there we go, guys. It's time to have a little look at some gameplay. Right, here we go, fellas. Bit of action first out in the IS-7. In both of these replays I'm going to show you, you're going to see me make a lot of mistakes but because of what tanks I'm in, uh, I get away with the majority of it. Anyway, right, I7, you see there that last shot, just how long the aim time is. What was it 3.4 seconds? I've got vert stabs on here as well. That one whiffed. I told my ground there's a lot of enemies to the front, that was a Yag Tiger we just bounced there, with the side armour. That's a prototype. Track soak that one up. Look at this beating we're taking. But that's not good though. Don't need a get damage gun on the I-7. The accuracy's bad enough anyway. Time to make this guy pay. There we go. Third of his health gone. Third of his health gone and do his turret ring there. Ah uh, no, maybe that was maybe he's gonna need one more, I'll just say well he won't now. Team help me out a little bit. Let me get a bounce. Never mind. Team help me out a bit there, finish off that guy, time to push in and mess with some of these other guys. Yak Tiger, he's now gone. Time to continue our advance. See the speed here? This would count as medium ground, I think. And we're whizzing along quite nicely. That 60 km an hour uh, top speed limit is a bit of false advertising. You only do that really downhill. Quick snapshot on that guy, he's dead. You can see the speed of this tank. I got here quite quickly. Uh, quick enough to get behind these guys and finish them off. Yeah, that's a rock. Can't drive through a rock. Managed to dodge a shot from the Waffle 4 though, Ooh, and we bounce the E100. Happy days. Right, so I can either stay at range here, and the E100 he could possibly angle quite nicely, and I wouldn't have a chance to penetrate him without premium rounds. So I'm going to push in. There he hits me, kills my driver. Get another one for his lower plate. Got to put my driver back in. Don't want this guy getting around the side of me. Just need to keep face hugging now. So I go to make it look like I was going for his upper bar and then I'll pull back and put one for his lower plate. He's now pushing in on me so I can't do that anymore. And that one misses. 
Bounce another one. So now I go for his turret ring and that bounces. Uh, that's not good. When he actually pens that one, he got my side armor. And there we go, a little bit of lag. Aim for the back end of his tank and I hit his drive wheel. Bounce another one. Boom. There we go, again, using the IS-7 speed. Can't do this in a lot of heavy tanks. We are literally rolling. Hit the waffle four, go to ram him, hoping to finish him off, but it doesn't quite finish him off. I'll take him for most of his health there. And he's done. Last shot of the game then, into the back of an object 704. And he's done. Right, time to have a quick look at the results. I've made quite a few mistakes there, fellas. I let the E100 actually damage me, which was not good. And I bounced a couple of shots. A couple of easy shots off his turret, uh, which I would have been better off aiming elsewhere. But anyway, just under 6k damage. But more importantly, 5.5k blocks gives us a steel wall there. And that is what the IS-7 is about. That is what the IS-7 is good for, bouncing a lot of shots gives you the time you need to get that derpy inaccurate gun aimed in and try and get the damage done. Right on to the IS-4 now. Next up then, defending an assault in the IS-4 on Malinov. In this, in this game you're going to see the derpy nature of this gun. Although the gun stats are actually better than the IS-7, you don't notice it at all. Maybe it's just me, maybe I'm just a scrub in this tank. But it doesn't feel like 0.37 when the IS-7 is 0.4. They, they feel about the same. So we've got one into the Centurion 7-1, now two. One thing I didn't mention in the garage as well. Uh, both tanks have the same... Oh, that was a bad miss. That was a nice. There's that derpy nature of this gun. Yeah, like I was saying, uh, both tanks have exactly the same ammo count. But because the IS-7 has that extra caliber on the gun, you can actually do more damage total. And I, there's only been a couple of occasions where I've run out of ammo on the IS-7, but with the IS-4, it happens quite regularly. And just that, like I was saying, the derpy nature of this gun, you can aim up shots nicely and they don't go anywhere near where you want to aim. And when you've got to try and do the majority of the work for your team, uh, running out of ammo is really bad. In this game, I actually do run out of ammo. Admittedly, I do take a lot of risky shots, but if you don't take the risky shots, you're never going to hit the those, like, lucky shots, if you know what I mean. So still taking no damage in this game. Focus on this location. The enemy is taking the base. Finish fire on target. Yeah, that was kind of my fault. He started to move and I didn't correct that one. Finally take him out, but now I'm out of AP. That's all my AP gone. And that is the trouble with heat. I much prefer APCR. With APCR that would have gone straight through, but because it was heat, the track soaked it up, and I only tracked that guy there. Bit of a mistake for me, anyway. I knew I had heat loaded, so I'm more than likely I should have aimed for his side armor rather than his drive wheel. So now I'm getting hit in the ass by an E50. So I'm soaking up pretty much every shot he fires. E50 is one of the lowest pen tin iron mediums, 
but it's still a tier 9 medium and we were bouncing his shots. Got time to get rid of this bulldog, he's just being annoying, he's keeping me spotted. And then we soak up another one. Cap count's nearly ticked up. Team is slowly making their way down there. There's still a couple of them up on the hill. And there we go again. Hit the E50 finally. But the track soak up that heat round with 340mm of penetration. Guys get the reset in, but of course they are now prime target for all of the guys on the red team but are at the back of the map. turret shot there, most tanks would have gone for that, but not in this thing. Well, Object 263, the only place I'm going to have anything in front is either for his gun mantle or either side of the gun. Did aim that one up nice, but it's bounced anyway. So one heat round left. Not good. Need this one to count. Oh, and I didn't give it enough lead. So now I'm down to the high explosive. All I can do now is reset the cap. But we're still not taking any more damage from that one shot from earlier. Right, skipping forward then, it's just me and a couple left. Trying to cap again, the other two guys were up on the hill, one of them's been taken out, so now it's just me. All I can do now is get a couple of resets in and hope this Jagdpanzer actually bothers his ass to get off the hill. Now I'm actually taking a beating, I've got tier 10s and tier 9s shooting at me and I'm still alive. And that one bounced, I didn't get the reset. There we go, last shell of the game, get my final reset in. The time is ticking up, but they can cap in time. I just need that Jagdpanzer to put one hit in. Slowly trundling his way over, but it's going to be all too late. All of that effort for no reason. There we go. Base captured with only 10 seconds left on the clock. Maybe I could have saved one of my resets for a little bit later on. But I think I tried my hardest there. I fired all my ammunition. Most of it missed. I lose a lot of money. Do 3,300 damage. 3,300 assist points and blocked 3,300 damage there. And we only lost a lot of our hit points at the end there because I literally drove out into an open field to get the cap resets in. So there we go guys, uh, you can probably see from the two replays there that the IS-7 is a more reliable tank. But I do like the IS-4, it is a good tank. Uh, it's just I don't seem to play it very well. Uh, maybe a few more games in and I may be able to get something decent out of it. So there we go tankers, we've had a look around both tanks, although they're both tier 10 Russian heavy tanks, they're a little bit different. The IS-7 is more suited to fighting people from the front, it has a really really good frontal turret armour, frontal hull armour, and if you can get this thing hold down or face hug people, it leaves them with little opportunity to be able to actually damage you. It does have slightly less hit points from the IS-4, but it's a lot faster. And I think 90% of people who own both tanks would probably say that the IS-7 is the better tank. So the IS-4 then, although not slightly, not quite as good from the front in terms of hull armor uh, for side scraping, it is one of the best tanks in the game. The turret is extremely strong unless people catch the weak point at the top. 
the gun, although I still find it very derpy, uh, the stats would suggest that it's actually a better gun than the 130mm on the IS-7. Yeah, and it does have 350 more hit points from than the IS-7. So, in terms of durability, although the hull armor is not as good from the front, because you have that ability to take maybe one more shot off like a tier 10 medium, the durability is not far off the I-7 level anyway. Yeah, so there we go fellas, now it's up to you if you haven't already got these tanks to make your choice, but remember the IS-4 has a log, the IS-7 doesn't have a log, you need a log, it will bounce loads, no I'm joking, I shouldn't say that, you might think it's true, no, I log does not act as space armor at all, it's just there to look pretty like all Russian tanks should. Anyway, so, yeah, like I said, we sunned them up. There's, I'm not going to tell you which one to choose, fellas. It's entirely up to you. It depends how you like to play your heavy tanks. Uh, the ST1, though, at Tier 9, was the highlight of this line for me. It's just as good as the IS-4, in my opinion. It just has less hit points, which is the way the line should work. Although with the IS-7, though, the IS-8, I did find I did not do very well in nowhere near as good as the i7 this is by far one of the best tanks in the game I've not played as many games in the is4 as I have this so uh, yeah maybe one day I'll come to love the is4 as much as the is7 but for me personally at the minute the is7 would be my first choice again although I preferred the grind on the is4 line yeah but I'm happy I've got both and now it's time for you guys to make your choice if you haven't already well there we go guys hope you enjoyed the video please give it a like if you did please sub if you're not and I'll catch you on the next one see you later